It's hard to believe that January has gone already, done and dusted. I've been getting lots of questions just asking if I could show you some of the behind the scenes kind of things that we get up to through each month and that's what this upload is all about. At the end of each month going through 2022 I'll just be giving you some snapshots about what we've been up to out there on the bank side. So January really started with a visit to a very nice reservoir which is very close to where I live in Sheffield and that is Ully Reservoir. It's a beautiful looking reservoir, it's very very deep. There are shallower areas and there are actually open matches being ran there currently which run right the way through the winter. Now I was actually there with Tom, he actually selected that venue because he wanted to do some deep water feeder fishing. As most people know fishing in deep water is very different from fishing lots of the shallower lakes that we fish and medium depth waters because you know most of the time the fish aren't down on the bottom and in deep water you have to kind of fish a little bit differently and that's exactly what Tom wanted to work on. He also wanted to do it at range as well so he was very consistent um, as the day progressed hitting that 60 meter mark uh, and he basically had the reservoir to himself. It was very cold, the water clarity was incredibly clear, I've never really seen a reservoir like that quite as clear. So I did kind of fear the worst, it was very cold, however just by ringing the changes, just by changing feeders, changing his approach he found some fish and as the session went on it just got better and better and better once we found out the little tweaks certain hook baits a certain length hook length a longer hook length was was better and just by changing the feeders changing the consistency of the ground bait and being very very careful about how much we actually fed he went on to catch a beautiful net of fish mainly skimmers but he did get some bream in there as well and there was the odd roach and perch in there as well but it was just a beautiful way to kick off not only January but to kick off the year as well The next target for me was the Boston Masters Qualifier which was due to take place on the 8th of January and I, unlike many previous years, um, am starting to get quite a little bit of flexibility, a little bit of time to prepare for big matches so I made the decision to drive down there on the Friday morning which was the 7th just so that I could go through one or two tactics actually on Boston Lake just to kind of get a feel for how it was actually fishing. It's not very often I get a chance to do this, but it's certainly something that I will be doing more through this year. So I went along there on Friday morning, I bumped into fishery owner Nigel, which was always great to see him, uh, but it was very, very cold. There was ice all down the margins, all the puddles uh, down the road were, were iced over, and I did fear the worst. There was only one other angler there, and he was a carp angler up on peg one, two, three, and he hadn't caught anything. But I actually went there just to fish two main methods, to be fair. I knew or I thought what I would be um, incorporating into my match plan the following day. I thought I knew what I would need, but on this particular recce session, I just focused on the PVA bags and I also fished quite an aggressive method feeder approach. And it was very clear that neither one of them worked. The first cast on my PVA bag, I left it out there 30 minutes and I never even had a sign. And I put the bomb out there with the PVA bag on at about 50 meters, and I never even had a single line bite, no indications, nothing. It was out there 30 minutes. So I reeled in and changed to a slightly different PVA bag, punched it out there to about 60 meters, and that was actually out there. I decided to leave it out there for an hour just to see if I could even just get some sort of a sign of fish moving. And it was out there 52 minutes. And as it went round after 52 minutes, I hooked a fish and it was a, a skimmer about six ounce, which came off on the way back. And whilst that might seem as though it was a complete failure, what it actually did was it meant that I could quite clearly put a line through that method for the match on the following day. I also then switched to a method feeder. I got a bream first cast, fishing quite a large me method feeder. And I got a bream first cast and then I got another bream later on but it was very clear that that was way too aggressive for that time of year. So again, that was something else I could put the line through. The next morning, I went back there and fished the Boston Masters Qualifier. I drew peg 40. It was very, very windy. And that's kind of, it can be a tough section, that, you know, that area there. However, because I'd seen and, and witnessed what happened the day before, I could see that it wasn't really going to be a big carp affair. You know, the carp had slowed down feeding. And so I decided to spend the first 90 minutes fishing for carp long, and that's what I did with a method feeder. And I came back with just one two pound bream. 
and it looked very evident as though there weren't many carp being feeding in that section there where I was so I'd already set up a cage feeder line at 25 meters where it was quite a firm bottom and I'd pre-fed that at the start of the match and I went on it after 90 minutes and I got four breaming forecasts with the cage feeder dead red maggots I put a little bit of worm through as well and that was really the pattern for the match then every time I set that line up I gave it a little bit of a rest went back on it I got a bream and I ended up the session I ended up the match with 23 pound of bream which won the section and secured me a place uh, qualifying for this year's Boston Masters final which takes place in November so that was a great way to start off the year with that match and you know it really was on the back of that little recce session that I had the day before I, you know but I won the section with 23 pound and there weren't any carp caught in that section at all there were just two f1s and they were both three to four pounds so my decision to spend three and a half hours really on that cage feeder approach or focus on that to you know target the the bream uh, paid off the 13th of January this was a date that I dreaded I dread this day every year and it's the day when feeder masters tickets go on sale it's brilliant in the sense that you know you're looking forward to the event for another year it's when it really starts everyone thinking about you know feeder masters qualifiers and trying to get in that big money finally in September at Upper Tamar but actually getting trying to get hold of tickets can you know it's very dif difficult just purely because of they're in such high demand I was sat there just before 10 o'clock on that morning of the 13th and I had um, my normal desktop computer there I'd, I'd got a laptop as well just in case my system crashed or whatever I, you know I wanted to give myself the best possible chance of getting some tickets and thankfully I did get a few tickets however they weren't really for the venues that I wanted but I'm not really going to complain so if you want to see our progress through the feeder masters competition which doesn't start until April then I have got some tickets for it and I will be trying my hardest to get in that Tamar final which takes place in September so I will be filming live matches along the way so it was more relief to get some tickets and uh, I'm really looking forward to getting stuck into that when it starts in April. The 14th of January was a day when, just like the previous week, I had got a golden rod feeder qualify the following day and I decided to head down to Larford Lakes the day before just to get a feel for how the venue is fishing. Now this was just purely an out and out recce session once again. I decided to get in on Match Lake. The complex was very very quiet but it was very very cold. It was very foggy as well and half of the lake was actually frozen over as well and so you know I went along there to just try and get a bit of a heads up for the Golden Rod qualifier the following day on the same venue and you know, whilst I was sat there on my own, it gave me a chance to just kind of, I focused on the open method feeder, put it in, in different areas of the swim. I tried larger feeders, smaller feeders, and just tried to get a little bit of confidence in hook baits. Now it's something we talked about a lot on this channel, and that is in winter, you know, you can be leaving your, your method feeder out there for up to 30 minutes, sometimes even longer. And if you're gonna be doing that, you've gotta be super confident in your rig, and you've gotta be super confident in the hook bait that you're using. And thankfully, just through a little bit of perseverance, just through putting the feeder in different areas of the swim, I caught quite a few fish, which was great. So that set me up nicely, leading into the following day's qualifier. The 15th was the morning of the Golden Rod Feeder Qualifier, and thankfully I actually drew on Match Lake, which is the, the lake that I'd wrecked on the previous day. And I've got to admit, I drew at the right end of the lake. It was an interesting match, you know, it was a typical match where the fish were very very reluctant to move so if you weren't on the fish the chances are you wasn't going to get a visit from them but if you were on the fish then they pretty much stayed in that area throughout the match um, and I had a really steady match to be fair I fished the open method feeder for the whole day in various areas of the swim just chasing fish around the peg fortunately there were a few fish in front of me to start with and I caught them steadily from the off you know nothing too frantic but it was you know painfully clear that the fish were only kind of in front of me and, and towards the other bank which is where it's deeper on the other bank but I actually went on to um, I ended up second overall in the in the match with 92 pound of carp and f1s but unfortunately it was um, second in the zone as well I was up against um, Andy Power who was on the far bank on the deeper bank on the burr the match burr 
and it's deeper there and he caught well he caught steadily all day to be to be fair and he caught some fish later on closer in the margin is deeper over there and i know he caught on a, on a long pole line um which kind of just catapulted him in front but you know it was nice to be in the mix second in the match which was good um and obviously I had a nice day's fishing as well but it was very much a um a winter match you know you could clearly see that when i was catching no one else around me was when they were catching i wasn't you know so it was evident that there were fish moving around but that is what we talk about you know when 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 we're talking about winter fishing that can be what it's all about location and just being a little bit mobile The 18th of January, it was a trip back to Boston Lakes and the weather had gone really, really cold as well. I was there with Trevor. He wanted to have a day focusing on fishing and being comfortable at fishing 70 meters and being really consistent with his accuracy as well, fishing at that range. However, when we got there, the vast majority of the lake was actually frozen over. It was iced over and so much so we didn't even know if we were actually going to be able to fish. When we went into the clubhouse to get the day ticket, it basically told us that, that there was about five pegs that were available. And ironically, they were the pegs where, you know, you do stand the best chance of catching fish anyway. The chances of catching there were really, really slim. So much so that I've got to give this a mention that the lake was so frozen over and this venue fish is so hard when it is iced over that he actually, when we bought the day ticket, he actually gave us a free day's fishing. He says, look, you're probably not going to catch anything today. Here, you can use this ticket when you come next time for a free day's fishing, which I thought was an incredibly nice gesture. Um, but as it turned out, the actual area where it was free from ice, where, he, you know, Trevor could cast centimetres, was right where you'd want to be. Pegs 122, 123 and 124. So he took the opportunity. He took the opportunity and sat in peg one, two, four. That would give him a good cast of, you know, probably 70 meters. And as the ice receded, obviously he could go further past that later on in the session. But um, as you'd expect, it was a very hard session, but um, he, he focused on his, ca on his casting and he got that right by the end of the session. He was hitting, hitting 70 meters quite comfortably. He'd got the gear to do it as well, which really helped. And he caught a few fish as well. He had one or two F1s and some bream as well, just by being really, really patient. But had we just fished that day and not worked on the things that he wanted to work on, then I'm sure we could have easily had, you know, a dozen fish as the day, you know, got warmer and warmer. I think the fishing would have got better and better. But it was just great to see Trevor working on the things that really mattered. But obviously it was an added bonus that he actually caught some fish as well. The 22nd of January was a day when I'd actually got a ticket for the new competition at Meadowlands, the Meadowlands Masters. And that's basically the competition that is run the same as Boston Masters. It's one qualifier each month and culminates in a big money final at the end of the year. I've never fished that before and I had a ticket for it. However, it clashed with a golden rod feeder qualifier at Holcroft. And so I decided to give my Meadowlands Masters tickets away. I actually gave it away to Trevor who went along there to try and qualify. So that freed me up to head up to Holcroft for the goldenrod feeder qualifier well good morning everyone it's a very frosty morning i'm at holcroft fishery it is january i had to think then and it's been very very cold overnight you can probably just make it out over my shoulder probably 99 percent of the whole complex is actually iced over I'm here today because we were meant to be fishing a golden rod feeder qualifier. However, for the first time, possibly the first time ever, the match has actually had to be called off purely because the complex is just about completely frozen. And this is a feeder competition, so they rescheduled it. I don't want to waste today, the sun's shining. There are one or two pegs available behind me that are free from ice. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be setting a bomb up and just fishing real, real winter style today. So. Yeah, if that sun stays out, I think it should be okay. Well, I'm actually down on peg 93. This is Moat Pool. I've got a couple of friends there already. As you can see, that's the edge of the ice just there. And then it's frozen right the way down for about another 10 or 12 pegs. There's another clear patch there, which is obviously where the aerators have been. And that's where they've kept the ice off. And then it's frozen all the way around the complex. To my right, there's about eight pegs then that's when the ice starts again ironically i've got my wingman for the feeder masters winter pairs a few pegs along he's going to um have a session there as well so it's um 
that sun is it's just got to one degree now which is actually warmer than it has been so um fully expecting this ice to start clearing so we'll get nice and comfortable and um hopefully there's going to be one or two car park there waiting for us So today I'm going to be targeting carp, that is it. Uh, I was going to come here today in the Golden Rod Feeder Qualifier. I only ever felt that you were only ever going to qualify with carp. So that's the gear that I've brought. I did bring a rod for fishing for skimmers if I was in a super tough area and we had no chance of qualifying and winning the 20 peg zone. And if it meant I had to fish for my 10 peg section for skimmers then I was going to be doing that. But um, it was always ever going to be about carp today. So it's flat calm as you can see. The ice isn't moving as quick as what I thought, but I'm going to be kicking off with a bomb. That is what today is all going to be about. I'm going to be putting the bomb in different areas of the swim. If I'm too far, um, or if I'm casting over fish, or if there are fish there, even if they don't want to feed, I'm sure we're going to get line bites and things. So it's going to be a very, very simple approach, but we're going to be fishing with carpy type baits, all right? So I've got some corn. I've got some wafters as well that we can switch to, but I've also got some bread as well, which can absolutely, it can be devastating at this time of year. So I'm going to show you the rig. It's a really simple rig, but it's just coming up to 10 o'clock now. I really want to get a rig out there. So I'm going to get fishing and I could talk you through the things that I'm doing and we'll just see if there are going to be any fish out there. one 10 minute cast that I've just had in that spot I haven't had a sign no liners or anything so that's telling me that I don't think there's any fish there or at least on that line or from that range back so as I go further out I'm just gonna step up to a slightly heavier bomb so as I go further out I need a heavier bomb so I can tighten up to it so this is 17 and a half gram I'm keeping the double corn on so all I'm gonna do now is on that same line I'm just gonna go on that same range but slightly to the left this time and have a 10 minute cast just there really nice sitting here in the sun it's beautiful there's a couple of anglers walking around. There's one or two anglers that have stayed on to fish. Some of them are actually organised a knock-up as well. So uh, they still obviously want to fish a match. Bridge pool was starting to clear. As you can imagine, with this sun out, that's only going to help the temperature to rise and, and break some of this ice up. So at least they're going to be getting a bit of a knock-up. They just don't want to waste a day, especially when it's uh, conditions are like this. So for this sort of fishing, I always use the same rig, okay? It's a free running rig. You've got to use free running rigs here at this fishery anyway, but even if it was a, you know, allowed to use a fixed rig, I'd still be quite more than happy using this rig. All it is is a snap link swivel, free running on the six pound horizon main line, that's all it is. And then there, stopping that, all I've got is a hook length attachment, so I can quickly and easily change my hook lengths. I don't usually use these attachments. When I'm fishing normally with cage feeders or fishing for bream and all that sort of business, I don't usually use those. And that's because I don't like anything on the line below my rig. That's all, you know, the, the only reason for that. I like there just to be the line below the rig. However, when we're fishing like this, we don't know if the fish are gonna want a wafter on the bottom. We don't know if they're gonna want bread on the bottom, bread popped up. They might even want corn. Because of that, we're constantly changing hook lengths. All those different baits need a slightly different hook length. And with an attachment like that, it means we can quickly and easily just keep changing the hook length. So I've got a 30 centimeter hook length. And at the moment, because I'm currently fishing with bread, I've just got a speed stop on there and that is it. But I haven't had any indications yet. We've been fishing 40 minutes. I haven't had any liners. I haven't seen any fish move. So what I'm gonna to switch to now is I'm gonna change this hook length now and switch to a wafter so I can present that really nice buoyant bait but actually down on the bottom and i'm going to kick off with a nice yellow wafter just to see if we can find something out there just to give us a bit of uh, a bit of encouragement i've just gone to the far left of the swim now 
that's as far left as I've been all day. So we'll see if we can find a pocket of fish there. <laughs> How about out for a drop bike? It was really unfortunate that we couldn't fish that qualifier. Most people were up for it, but you know, lakes icing over it is something that happens this year. I never even had a single bite on that session. I couldn't believe it. Admittedly, I was only fishing for carp. I was fishing with bread, with corn, for, for bigger fish. I had about four or five line bites, but I never caught. But to be quite honest, when that sun was on us, it was really, really nice just to be there. It was unbelievable that when that wind kicked in, you could literally see the ice melting, you know? That, that, that ripple just appeared from nowhere in the space of about two minutes. And that really started to break up the ice and you could see the ice receding. But like I said, it was just nice to be there and that qualifier has actually been rescheduled for the 19th of February. The 23rd of January, this was a day when I decided I wanted to do something different. I haven't fished on a river for quite a while and there's a river of the Don which is at Sprotborough and it's somewhere where I filmed one or two videos there and I decided to go along there just for a complete change. I knew that I would be up against the float anglers, float fishing can dominate on that stretch and pole, it can be dominated with small fish with roach but there are bream there as well and when I've fished there before I've kind of, I've always done quite well, I haven't fished many matches there and when I have it's really been team events so I decided to go along there just with basically a feeder rod and just fish down one line one hole hopefully draw an area where there were some bream and just take the float lads on and just see if I could catch some bream and that's exactly what I did it was a thoroughly enjoyable day and I did film that whole match as a live match I'll put a link above and at the end of this video for you so you can watch that full live match if you want to watch it I ended up second overall in the match which was a very surprising result at the halfway stage however at the end I thought I might have done enough to win the match but you know a couple of missed bites and I came off a fish as well it cost me winning the match and it was the the, the last uh, angler to weigh in downstream to my left that actually just beat me but he did brilliant you know it was it was one of the matches where had I not just set one rod up I could quite easily have put the feed rod down and picked a float rod up or something it was just a case of focusing on that one line and sometimes just by sticking to your guns and trying to work something out that can be the best way to go and I think that's what happened that day so I ended up second overall in the match at 18 pound of, of skimmers and some nice bream as well but once again it was obviously great to to frame again in the match pick up some money but it was obviously great to have such a nice day's fishing especially for January The 27th was another trip back to Boston. There's a pattern emerging here, isn't there? You know, lots of the coaching sessions that I do, I vast majority of the time I just let the angler choose which venue they want to go to, within reason. And obviously Boston is a very popular venue, so I headed off back there with Mick, and that's where he wanted to work on his long range casting. Now Mick, full credit to him, you know, he fished on peg 104, he got plenty to water to have a go at, and whilst it would have been nice to catch a few fish, he was 99.99% sure he didn't care if he didn't catch a fish. He just wanted to work on the things he wanted to work on, and for him, it was being confident at casting at range. He, once he got over a certain range, he wasn't comfortable, especially if every peg was in, he wasn't confident in trying to push his, his gear to, you know, longer ranges, because he felt his accuracy wasn't quite right. So by not doing that, it was it was leaving a bit of a hole in his in his in his tactics when he was fishing matches there at Boston. But by the end of the session, he was comfortably hitting 70 meters, and I actually left him still there. He was still there when I left, and I think he was going out further and further and further. And you know there was a couple of other tweaks as regards his accuracy, and I was amazed how quick he picked it up. And when I left him, he was really really confident, and that was really nice, you know, because you could see that whilst you're always going to have the problem of coming up with a match plan. 
you don't really want to be thinking about well i know i should be fishing 60 meters or 70 meters but i can't quite reach it or i don't think i can reach it it was nice to see him in a position where he wasn't thinking that anymore he was thinking more about how he was going to approach his, his next match knowing that he could comfortably hit those ranges with his kit with his rod with his real combination and his rig so that was really really nice so you know if you're watching me massive well done mate it was great to see you focus so much on it um, and obviously it was another cracking day at Barston Lakes. And then the 30th of January to finish off the month, it was the final round of the Feeder Masters Winter Pairs competition that myself and partner for this event, Richard Vaughan, have been fishing. Now it's usually a six round league, um, however one of the rounds actually got cancelled just purely because the lakes were frozen over, so this was the final final round we were actually in ninth place and to be honest we haven't had any consistency or we haven't really got to grips with the event this year we haven't had chance to go and practice on there which i know we really wanted to and whenever i've been able to get there to do any sort of practicing on the venue it's always clashed with when there's been a match on there or through the period when it was iced over so we've never really got much momentum in this competition this year however going into this last round we were ninth overall they pay out the top 10 in this competition so at this that stage obviously we just wanted to make sure we were going to end up in that top 10 because you know it's no easy thing to do especially when you look at the caliber of angler that fished that event and the other thing as well is that this event is actually run side by side with the teams of four there as well so there's lots and lots of anglers fishing this event that have been fishing it almost every weekend or twice a week because they're fishing it as part of the team league as well so lots of the anglers are really up to speed on 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 the debates and the tactics you know which can be a huge advantage however when i drew our pegs i really feared the worst i thought you know we'd blown it i drew um a peg an area that wasn't fantastic to be fair it wasn't disastrous it was peg 88 on moat outer so that was a, a steady kind of a draw but i don't think it was ever going to give us a, a huge weight to rocket us up that that league table um, and then unfortunately i drew richard probably one of the, the pegs that i didn't want to draw um, for anybody was um peg seven on bridge outer it was the corner peg very very hit and miss and it's a peg where you generally have to target carp if the carp feed that can be okay you only get a pound for each carp so even if you caught 10 carp then you know he still would have only weighed 10 pound but obviously if the carp don't feed you can really be in trouble there you know and i've seen some very very good anglers blank and i've seen some very very good anglers just come away off that peg with just one carp or two carp so i re really feared the worst on, on, on paper we were we were out of that top 10 it was going to be over because it would have meant that i would have had to catch like my own weight but half of his weight as well to kind of make up for it but as it turned out he he did brilliant to catch he caught four and a half pound which was i think he had one carp but then he had some skimmers as well so he did really really well to to get that weight from that peg my peg i had to push we decided i was going to push it harder than normal because we wanted some weight to try and climb further up that leaderboard and to be honest it didn't really work however by tweaking a few things i managed to keep enough fish coming to kind of get a respectable weight for that section just there so as it turned out we didn't completely crash out it wasn't a fantastic day however because the whole complex fish hard our weight wasn't brilliant but other anglers weights weren't brilliant either you know so we didn't drop out of that top 10 so we actually ended up in 10th place which i was absolutely stunned about when when they read our name out in 10th place for um, the 200 pound prize I, I just couldn't believe it but obviously I was very relieved just to make sure we made that top 10 so it's an event that we're hoping to be fishing again next year um, at this moment in time and obviously we'll be giving it everything that we possibly can but I've got to say a massive congratulations to to Steve and Frankie for winning that league so easily they've done brilliant they've been on there and practiced and they've really worked it out so massive credit to them and they're brilliant anglers and to Lee Carey and Mick Viles and the lads for actually running that league again it was a flawless league and it's got to be one of the best run leagues around certainly going through winter so thank you to those lads for running that competition yet again 
So it was billed at being a little bit of a quieter month, but when you look back, you think how on earth did we fit all that in? We're now into February and this month we've got more golden rod feeder qualifiers that I'm gonna be fishing and filming for you. We've also got some group coaching days as well with uh, England feeder team manager, Dean Barlow. So I will be filming on those days. So you'll be getting an insight into what those group coaching days are all about. And then an event that I've been waiting four or five years to fish, and that is the Larford Silverfish Festival. That takes place during February, and I'm really looking forward to that. And I'm going to be giving that everything this year. I really want to win that title again. I haven't been there for four or five years, and I'm sure that it will have changed. You know, the approach and tactics that I used previously, I'm sure it's going to be different and the weather will have some impact on that. So I will be doing some filming of that for you as well. So if you don't want to miss out on any of those competitions going through February, don't forget to hit subscribe, and I really look forward to seeing you in the next upload.